Larry Kudlow is with us. Joining us now, White House <laughs> economist Larry Kudlow. Uh, yeah, he's there. I thought, I'm, gl I'm glad you're on camera and not on the phone, because I wanted to see a great big smile as soon as you appeared, because of this jobs report. You know, Larry, why don't you just take a victory lap and go at it right now? Oh, you know, modest guy that I am, but uh, I, I am. Let me take my throat lozenge out. I've been, I've been talking for so long, I don't know if I can continue to talk. Uh, first of all, Stu, it's always a pleasure. Happy Thanksgiving and holidays. Thank you. I, I just want to say that th these are spectacular numbers. Uh, what, 266, and then yep. you had a 41,000 upward revision. So those are really big numbers. You're back in the 300,000 zone. But really, really, I guess the fundamental point, America is working. America is working. And just to go underneath that, what we find looking at the numbers from this month and recent months and the whole year or so, the production workers are getting faster wage gains than their bosses, the managers. Uh, last time I saw that, Stu, was when I was a Reagan Cup scout at OMB here. It's the same idea. We hadn't seen that for many many years. And I want to just make one last point surrounding this. America is working. We are in an American workers boom uh, with respect to income and wages. But look, President Trump has restructured and rebuilt this economy with lower taxes and regulations and energy opening and, and trade opening, tough trade openings. We are seeing some very big changes in the whole infrastructure of the U.S. economy. And you know what? It's not over yet. I know everybody was talking about a recession a few months ago. I argued to us blue in the face that that wouldn't happen. This thing is nowhere near over. Nowhere near over. So can we get closer to 3% growth in the early part of next year? Because we've come down from 3%, 2%, we're probably around 2% right now. But with a jobs report like this, wages rising, and all the changes that you've outlined there, Larry, can we get to 3% in the early part of next year? Can we do it? Well, we sure can. We absolutely surely can. I mean, one key here, just I'll be general and then I'll be very direct. One key here is, again, my, my theme of rebuilding and restructuring. President Trump has reestablished and restored and deepened incentives, incentives, you know, to work, to invest, to take risks, to start a business. He's not attacking success. He's rewarding success. That's a huge part of the restructuring. Now, to the numerical point, uh, some positive things happening. I mean, look, we ran up against an extremely severe, tight monetary policy. Uh, starting in 2017 and then brutalizing in 2018. Now, the Fed has changed course. They've taken the foot off the brake. The balance sheet is rising nicely. Um, I looked this morning. The monetary base and M2 are growing about 14 percent at an annual rate year on year. That's a total reversal from where we were a year ago, yeah. and a darn good thing, and they've lowered the rates. So that's a big plus right there, because, you know, that, that monetary stuff was stifling the incentives that I was arguing about before. So I'm very hopeful on that. And just on today's jobs numbers, uh, Stu, I think we are moving into a CapEx business investment recovery. We had a terrific one in 2017. How do you it's know that? Uh, I mean, uh, what, what numbers can you tell me that we got a capital investment resurgence? Where is it? A couple of things. Um, and, and it's not overwhelming. So, but I, I will just say, here's what I'm looking at. Uh, you know, I used to be a Wall Street economist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the durable goods report, the core CapEx shipments and orders popped up in October. Uh, that doesn't make a whole story. But it's the first nice pop-up I've seen. And one other point I'll make, and this is maybe a little more controversial. I know the ISM manufacturing was down uh, a mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're competing with the market uh, PMI. And that uh, broader measure, it covers more companies. That's been up now, I believe, for three or four straight months. So there's early signs. But the other thing is, too, 
with the GM strike over, I think these employment numbers and the income numbers behind it uh, are really going to produce much more uh, business investment, machinery, and technology, and so forth. And then we got stuff going on. Look, okay. uh, and NEC is deeply involved in the in the 5G build out. The 5G build out is not only employing hundreds of billions of dollars, and we're just getting started. There are going to be hundreds of thousands of people employed, whether it's high band in the cities or mid band in the rural areas. That's already beginning. That's a whole new factor. You know, these are Schumpeterian gales of creative destruction. Technology leads the way. So I'm just saying America is working. Uh, American middle income Americans are making more money. Their take home pay is better than anything we've seen in 20 years. So, yeah, I think business is going to start chipping okay. in its part. Now, now tell me about China trade. I have to ask the question. Every day we seem to get a headline on China trade. The market goes up, the market goes down. It's always indefinite. There's nothing concrete. Can you give us a concrete word on China trade? For example, are we close to phase one deal? You know, are we? Are we close? Well, look, I, I, I will say we're close. I will really rather quote the president, who himself, uh, in London and now back in Washington the last couple of days, has said virtually round the clock talks. The talks have been constructive. The talks have been productive. He's been saying this. He's been tweeting this. He hasn't seen the final deal yet, but he's been pretty optimistic uh, about the movement of this thing. The deputies uh, level just, uh, let's see, two nights ago they had a meeting. Uh, we're, ha we're basically involved now in every aspect of this, so, you know, stay tuned. That's well, all I can say. Here's, here's what the, some people are saying. The president will move heaven and earth to keep this economy going into 2020 and into the election. And to, to, to keep it going, he'll do anything, including working out a China trade deal, because that would be good for the economy and good for the market. Does he feel that pressure? Is he in that corner? No, I think that's something of a mischaracterization. Let me be careful here. I don't want to misquote, but look, he has said time and again he will sign a good deal or a great deal, as he would characterize it. Um, what's good for the economy? Well, a good deal that deals with issues such as uh, farm tariffs and farm purchases, uh, intellectual property theft, forced technology transfer, and a litany of things. A good deal like that, which is enforced, would be great for our economy, both our economies. Hmm. On the other hand, Stu, let me put it to you this way. If we don't get such a deal, then I think the president is bound and determined, as he has shown us, to defend America and to defend the American economy and defend the American worker, the farmer, the technology person. That's a form of economic growth, too. I mean, we cannot give yeah. up. We cannot let any power, be it China or any other power, steal our dreams, our plans, okay. Okay. our creativity. So the president must protect and defend our economic rights as well as national security. And you know what? He's been tough. I love tough. Defending our economic security is also good for the economy. So, you know, let's see how this thing shakes out. Okay, but I can quote you as saying, yes, you think we are close to a phase one deal. Got it. One last one, please, Larry. How did Mr. Trump really feel about that video uh, where some world leaders appear to be mocking him at the NATO conference. Do you know how he really felt about that? Was he, was he really angry? Is that why he left the place fast? Oh, I, I wasn't there at the time. Uh, I, think, I think he's mellowed out a bit on that. <laughs> what? The president uh, has mellowed out? <laughs> oh, kind of me Larry. <laughs> kind, of me kind of mellowed out. It's such a beautiful day here, Stu. <laughs>